I have here two wiffle balls, one the size of a regulation baseball, the other the size of a regulation softball. I've got this one attached to a string hanging down in front of the screen. I have a bright floodlight here that is larger than either one of these. And um, I'm going to move this wiffle ball, the larger one, uh, to represent the Earth in front of the smaller one, which is the Moon. Now, technically, when a lunar eclipse occurs, it's the Moon that moves, not the Earth, but it doesn't really matter for the purpose of our demonstration here. If people want to argue about that, we can talk about that later. I'm going to bring it in for the top, and watch as it does this. The shape of the shadow is a curve. And as it moves off, it is also a curve. Now I can bring it in from other directions, like a partial eclipse. Again, it's not just a curve. It is the uh, part of a circle. Part of a circle. And this goes back to Aristotle, 3500 uh, 30, uh, 350 BC when he argued this sort of argument for the Earth being a globe. Only a round object, a spherical object, will always cast a circular shadow as seen from the Earth on the Moon during a lunar eclipse.